the policy subcommittee meeting um, of November 14th, 2023. Roll call, please. Member Dugan. Present. Member Magnolia. Present. So I was hoping for a motion. Yes. Yes. Member um, Magnolia. I would like to make a motion to uh, take the agenda out of order and begin with policy JJICA, athletic eligibility high school transfer policy. Okay. Second that motion. Roll call, please. Member Dugan? Yes. Member Magnolia? Yes. Okay, so I know we have Ms. Colleen Peterson and uh, Attorney Gallo here to kind of walk us through the proposal for JJICA, which is Athletic Eligibility, Eligibility High School Transfer Policy. So, sure. Thank Mr. You, Gallo. Chair. Thank you, Chairperson Dugan. Um, so about three quarters of the way through the packet in front of you, because they're in order, is uh, JJICA. You'll see a, a page that says summary regarding JJICA. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give a couple intro remarks and then turn it uh, over to my colleague, Ms. Peterson. Um, a lot of thought went into this draft. Um, Deputy Gorris, uh, who's here with us uh, tonight, um, helped with the, the drafting of, of it, as well as Colleen and myself. Um, there was a, a pretty rich feedback process with principals and tweaks and edits made based on principal feedback. And all of the ADs agree with the policy that's before you. Um, Mr. Dick Newton is behind me. Um, having been in a room with, with Dick and his two colleagues, I can say that it's not always the case that all three ADs agree. Um, <laughs> on this particular occasion, they do. Just right. a broad... <laughs> <laughs> We're starting off with some... just run with this, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> that works. So, so um, the, the, the next page after your summary shows you the current vote and policy, mm -hmm. and it was done years ago and without the benefit, I think, of working with Dorothy Frankly at that time. And what was voted on in 2010 was a policy with no appeal, and then immediately after that, a vote that contradicts the policy by inserting an appeal procedure yep. within the minutes of that meeting. Okay. And so that is where we're at today. Um, what this lacks are any articulated rules, standards, rationales, articulated exceptions to the policy. Mm -hmm. And so what this draft attempts to do is do all of that, but I want to be very clear about the result. The result, if this is adopted, is there are articulated rules, standards, and rationales. There are limited explicit exceptions. There is no more committee system, and there is no more appeal system. Okay. And so that would mean that a decision is final and a decision is a decision. Okay. And so all that being said, I'm going to turn over to um, Colleen Peterson, who's done great work and a, a great presentation on this, um, but that's just an overview. Okay. I had Thank great you. collaborators on this. Um, a lot of feedback went into this. So, mm -hmm. so the current transfer policy, as I just stated. Um, so for this new proposal, any student who transfers from one Lynn High School to another will be deemed ineligible to participate in the sport they played in the previous year. So that's staying the same. Um, they will be able to play, this is a big change, they will be able to play in a different sport. So say they played basketball at Classical, um, they could play a different winter sport. Mm -hmm. They could play a spring sport. Right now they just can't play anything, which is really heartbreaking. I, mm -hmm. as doing these transfers this past year, um, being the big bad, you can't play sports woman. I I don't like it. So <laughs> I feel like this is it's it's this will be a really good change. Um, if a student transfers during a sports season, they will not be el eligible to participate in that sports season, and will also be ineligible for that sport the following season. So just like I stated, um, so this starts once they're enrolled in ninth grade. From that point onwards, if a student changes schools, they will be in ineligible to play the sport participated in previously, unless covered by one of the exceptions that we're going to show you here. Okay. Um, and if they, if the AD and the principals agree that that specific exception applies, then they could play. So here are the exceptions: <clears throat> change of placement based on special education criteria disability and or thera therapeutic program need, change of placement based on exceptions to an application-based secondary school that doesn't have its own athletic program in, like Frederick Douglass, um, change of place or factory, change of placement based on homelessness or foster care, transfers are re resulting in disciplinary removal or as an outcome of an investigation by LPS, like say it was a bullying situation. Um, change of pl placement based on a court order, a change in res residency 
resulting in travel hardship because the student's new residence is more than two driven miles from their formal in high school. But this must be supported by um, proof, a utility bill or a license. So they can't just be like, I moved with my uncle and mm -hmm. now I live near. So it has to be supported with those documents. Um, and a student admitted to an application-based based high school from a waiting list. So if they start at classical and then they get into tech, they could still play that sport. Um, and also if they're at tech and their shop changes, and that was the whole reason they went there, mm -hmm. then they could, they could still play sports. Um, so again, the key changes, students will be eligible to participate in any sport they did not previously participate in. It eliminates the appeal process. And it adds provisions for eighth grade programs, Discovery, and um, Frederick Douglass. So if they are considered eligible under an exception, both schools, principals, and athletic directors indicate in their written agreement that one or more of the exceptions apply, there will be no appeal. Um, so these are the provisions for the eighth grade. So because LVTI has the eighth grade program. Um, so if a student plays a varsity sport in eighth grade and then changes schools, the overall transfer poly policy does not apply because a lot of times eighth grade students don't get into Atlanta. Tech. Um, so the standard MIA Form 200 will apply in that case. Um, if a student transfers after ninth grade to an admission-based school, the overall transfer policy does not apply and the standard MIA Form 200 will be utilized. For high schools without their own athletic teams, students must play for the school they've been assigned to. So whatever is their district school, even though we have school choice, but it will just, that's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Um, based on the default high school assignment, that would, would have applied at the time they entered ninth grade, either Lynn Classical or Lynn English. Lynn Tech, you cannot, um, it is not an option for that athletics. If there was no initial placement, such as a student on an outside special education placement or a thera therapeutic progr program need, a student can make a one-time choice and after that the policy will apply. And that is policy broken down. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, any questions from? Can I just add? Of course, yeah. Uh, we tried to address the athletic policy in a way that um, things that are outside of the student and the student's family, outside of their control, that they're not being punished for or limited to by those things. Okay. So those things could include like those exceptions that we just listed, that life happens, things happen, right? Absolutely. And so really making it more student-centered and family-centered. Mm -hmm. We understand the initial reasons for the athletic transfer policy being put into place. And we want we don't want to undo that, but we also don't want to punish people that have situations that happen outside of their control. Right. And don't want to include additional steps for individuals to seek options to that is not necessarily uh, an outside circumstance, mm -hmm. if that's clear. It is, yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I guess I just had, it, well, thank you for that thorough presentation I a couple parts I really like are that they can still play a sport you know if they're transferring they're a basketball player they can go swim or they can go do indoor track or whatever it might be so I think that's a real good component of what we've done here um, just a quick question form 200 you mentioned MIAA form 200 could you explain that a little bit I'm a little can you explain that? I'm of that one. Yes. Yeah, uh, come, thanks. <laughs> He's my MIA person. Yeah, no, it, well, it's important to have an MIA person. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get ourselves in a situation. <laughs> yeah. the, um, anytime a student transfer from an MIA school, okay. they have a form that's called a Form 200. Okay. And the principal and the AD have to establish that the eligibility is okay um, in this Okay. Um, and you sign off and send it off. It, it's initiated by the receiving school. Okay. So they send it to the, the, the sending school and they sign off and then, then it's fine. Okay, so that's just the standard MIA, MIA transfer. Actually, okay. MIA actually doesn't have anything to do with it. Our Lynn policy, they don't, but I'm saying Form 200. Oh, okay, okay. If two schools agree. Then we're good. It says sends it to Okay, okay, all right. So 
right. with us. I mean, you know, there's no, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Usually the Yankees talk. When all that's going on, usually you, you can sense out who's, who's transferring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that applies. Let's say a child uh, student athlete transfers from St. Mary's to Lynn English. That would that form would apply as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, Everyone. Is, yeah. No, I mean it's it's really hard to balance all these things, yeah. and and I just appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Especially, I think the student athletes are going to appreciate it because it's much clearer. I know from speaking to parents. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And I know this is a this is a hot topic one, definitely. Um, you know, some of the things that have happened in the past. So we do appreciate your attention to it and your you know your attention to the detail of it. So that it's very helpful for us on the committee. Appreciate that. Thank you. Can I ask a procedural question? You may. Because this is part of J, and we're taking up other parts of J. We don't need a motion for this one, correct? We just are going to go through J, and when we move J, we'll move J. Yes, I would okay. think that's probably the okay. call will follow. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen, Charlie. Okay. Uh, thank you, Colleen and Charlie. Uh, so next we have... Uh, Section C, CHCA, which is Approval of Handbooks and Directives. Um, So, Charlie, you're still sitting there. I'm assuming this is yours as well? Yes. All right. Thank you. So um, so the Policy Subcommittee uh, last term um, recommended and then the full committee adopted um, CHCA. Mm-hmm. And, and this was one that slipped a little bit through the cracks. And I, Dor- Dorothy and I have um, since had some conversation about it. But I'm here tonight just to talk to you a little bit about the implications of it on a practical basis and um, respectfully um, uh, suggest that, that the committee may want to consider um, reconsider the adoption of that particular policy. You have the policy in front of you, and I've highlighted the provisions I want to focus on. One is that there's a requirement that the school committee approve um, the district handbook. So you were given, I think, by Ms. Jewell's copy of the district handbook last night, but I have it in front of you tonight as a prop. What you'll see is it has policies that the school committee has already adopted. It has forms and, you know, laws and regulations and resources in it. Um, It's not something we've typically put before the committee for an approval vote. We've given it to the committee as, you know, an informational Mm -hmm. um, purpose. If we did put it before the committee for a vote, what that would do is that would shorten significantly and hamper our policy writing abilities over the summer. Summertime is a really important policy writing time, and so this would make that process more cumbersome um, and, and frankly, less, less of a quality process, and it would take longer. In addition, the school committee would probably need to meet more often in the summertime in order to adopt this. These things, right. um, and, and then the second highlighted provision is all handbooks published will be made available for the informational purposes. Um, and I have other props. You know, there are things we call handbooks like the um, 504 team handbook and the student study team handbook that are really how to run a meeting. And I don't know if that's something that this committee wants to receive or not. That would be a big change. Um, from practice in the past. So I'm just here to explain the, the implications of adopting this mask policy and, and respectfully, and I know, I know Dorothy may um, you know have a similar or not similar viewpoint on it, but um, wanted to respectfully suggest that, that this is um, a policy that actually would, would uh, you know, require some retooling. Yes, uh, Member Magnolia. So, Attorney Gallo, if you can help me understand, um, when you say that summer is a really important policy writing time, um, what kind of policies are we talking about if this committee is sort of in charge of the policies for the entirety of LPS? Yep. So, so we brought, um, you know, we've brought technology, we've brought brought student assignment policies, we've brought um, protective sweeps, and all of those policies included many building-based representatives, principals, teachers, others who are available during the summer to collaborate in a meaningful way Mm -hmm. and that becomes a lot harder during the school year and Mm -hmm. so we would have difficulty um, having that kind of a comprehensive process if we have this policy in place. Oh so what you're saying is that the writing of policies is prohibited by this not the adoption of them. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry thank you for helping. No no I, I, I understand the difference now that you've explained it. Thank you. I would then recommend rescission. 
Okay. May I? Yes, uh, Ms. Presser. <laughs> Insert yes. an opinion <laughs> Absolutely. Here. So I, I, I guess I would not recommend rescinding the policy. Most of the policy reflects law. Yep. Um, that, you know, there has to be handbooks with disciplinary things in them. Um, but given what Attorney Gallo was saying about the difficulty and the, the reason that MASC has that committee approval part is really mostly to make sure that a student handbook doesn't change policy without the school committee being aware that policy is being changed through a handbook change. So in, maybe instead of saying committee approval is necessary, um, it could say something like the superintendent shall assure alignment between school committee policy and handbook policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and then, and maybe a qualifier in all handbooks, all handbooks um, that include disciplinary procedure or disciplinary policy, so that it gets away from the handbooks that that you point out with your props. Right. Does that? Right. I'm, no, that's f that's fine. I, it, you know, the the committee approval of the actual hand. I agree with you that the the discipline. Um, policies need to be approved. There's no statute requiring the actual approval of the district handbook, so I think your suggestion would be fine or total rescission would be fine. I don't know if um, the superintendent or administration have a, a recommendation um, on it, but, but just something that allows us to continue to do, I think, quality and comprehensive policy work, uh, and, and this frankly doesn't. Okay. Yeah. I, I would yeah. certainly recommend so. that um, we leave it as Superintendent shall ensure alignment of policy and handbook, and that way not only could we draft policy for review mm -hmm. of the subcommittee, but we could also um, try to, at the same time, just concurrently do some of the administrative procedures, mm -hmm. right, so that we make sure that we're aligned right. on both and that whatever goes in the handbook is actually... Um, you know, makes sense right. for, for the policy that's, that's being redrafted or, or revised. Okay. Yeah, that all makes sense to me. My Magnolia. Yeah, what if we just stop the policy after superintendent before the highlighted areas and then just leave that sentence, the superintendent will use his or her judgment as to whether other specific handbooks need committee approval and then just end it. So... So just remove the highlighted parts. Remove the, both yeah. of the highlighted spots and then ha the word however because it just doesn't yep. make sense without the second. Mm -hmm. So this is what it would read. I, as I understand what um, Ms. Presser is saying, this would keep that intention but get rid of anything controversial. So it would say the law directs that in each school building, blah, 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 and then end with, therefore, the committee expects handbooks requiring approval to be approved prior to the publication by the committee and or the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Because that allows the superintendent's authority right. to continue, to to continue. Right. yeah. And that would be reflected actually of the practice that we've done the, for the time I've been it. here, yeah. which is that you know over the summer I sent the handbook to the administrative team and you know, yeah. how's it look and got some feedback. And then it, it ends with the superintendent will use his, her judgment, actually, their, their, judgment. their judgment, <laughs> judgment um, right. their judgment as to whether other specific handbooks need committee approval. That covers that we don't need all that other stuff. That's right. So you're saying just eliminate everything that's highlighted. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, that also, make by sense. doing that, it allows for printing. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, um, so that we're prepared for right. the opening of school. Yeah. Uh, because although it gets posted on the website for access, mm -hmm. we also print 100 copies per school yeah. mm -hmm. for anyone who wants a copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just a clarifying question. Um, does this change the employee handbook? This wouldn't change like LTU and They're the super kind of. Two different things. Sorry, those are two different things. Okay. All right. Just wanted to we make sure. We are currently working on it. <laughs> A, a staff handbook. Okay, so and so LTU still would be it involved would be in separate that. And that would be that. separate. Okay, yeah. so yeah. the staff handbook would be. And separate. LTU is part of that. Yes, work. part of that work. Right, right. Okay. Does that meet your approval? It, it definitely meets okay. my approval. Yeah. Is everyone else on board with that? Okay. So would we need a motion for that. Is that the only one from Section C? Oh, it is the only, yeah, one. The only okay, one. Okay, so I'd C. like to move um, CHCA as amended. And I just want to make sure Ms. Jules has it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> to the full committee. To the full committee. Right. Okay. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Dr. Dugan? Yes. Dr. Magnolia? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, so next is Section E. First one that we're going to talk about in Section is EFC, Universal Free School Meals. Um, so Attorney Gallo, is that also something you're leading you, us? You are stuck with me till do All right. Till well, D4, listen. Till Chairperson Dugan. It could be much worse. <laughs> it could be much worse. <laughs> So um, I just um, big picture section E EFC EFD EFE were three uh, meals food services policies that were put on hold because there was at the time uh, a routine um, uh, food services audit occurring and so we wanted to put, put pause those policies during that time. What you see in front of you is a collaboration between Mask, myself, Kevin McHugh, who's here, and um, Kevin Richardson from Food Services. Um, EFC is a model uh, policy from MASC. EFC is the Universal Free School Meals Policy. And what we've done in EFC is we've just changed uh, some language to, um, to, to make this policy more than public schools specific. We have had, I think since 2018, one free breakfast and lunch per day. And so the paperwork that's referenced does not apply for the Lynn Public Schools. So okay. we've stricken that language yep. in EFC. Um, that's about it. Uh, in EFD, we have um, noted with greater specificity from the mask policy, we're talking about one free breakfast and one free lunch per day. That's the underlying language there. Um, we've taken out the language about parents and guardians being responsible for meal charges um, incurred beyond the meals provided. And then the hardship piece, because that's just not practice here. Um, on the second page of EFD, we've taken out the delinquent accounts um, sort of stuff and, and that's because you can pay for extra meals and extra food but we don't here allow students to incur debt to do so so that doesn't apply here and then finally EFE this is a requirement uh, as a, a minor corrective action under that uh, food services audit that occurred which is that we needed clearer provisions for grievances uh, to align to protected class um, status and also to align to uh, civil rights um, grievance procedures that are outlined on the uh, state's website and so EFE uh, departs a little bit from the mask policy as you can see but that is directed by corrective action and I'll be happy to take any questions but I want to also defer to um, Kevin McHugh if there is anything that I left out in, uh, in that. No and, and just on the, the reason we don't have any deferred debt or anything is because we have my payment plan where parents can put money on accounts. Right. So that's how we've actually worked it. And should they ever leave the district, they get a refund of anything on the account. So a child could purchase a second meal or a snack. or And we use it actually for our staff as well. Staff can do the same account to purchase meals as well. Okay. Okay. No questions? I think we're good. No questions on any so of that. So I'd like to move Section E as amended to the full committee. Okay. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Member Dugan? Yes. Member Magnolia? Yes. Okay. Very good. So the next is Section I. Again, I think uh, IHAM kind of encompasses a few things. So Attorney Gallo, again, if you want to. Thank you. Kind of guide us through that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So um, IHAM and the policies there under uh, govern health education, sometimes referred to as sex education, and we want to be sure that we're being totally compliant uh, in those areas and not leaving the school committee or the district vulnerable to, to any complaints mm -hmm. along those lines. And so. Uh, these policies previously went through the policy subcommittee, but given th that um, those concerns, we gave them a second look yep. just to make sure that, that we're being very careful in our approach. So what I want to start with doing is just uh, presenting very briefly the statute on this. We're, we're grounding this in law. Mass General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 32A. Um, the first provision requires uh, a policy ensuring that there's going to be parental notification. We have that policy in the Lynn Public Schools, to be clear. That is policy IHAMA. Um, the policy subcommittee voted to keep the Lynn version of that policy already. So I want you to know that that policy exists. I want the public to know that that policy exists. Um, the only change that was recommended at that time was to retitle it to match the mask. And actually, I think it's a federal uh, titling um, system. So, right. so, so we're good there. Right. Um, the second provision of the law requires that the policy afford guardians, uh, families, parents, the flexibility to exempt their child from portions of the curriculum. 
Um, this is currently in IHAM-R, and the policy subcommittee already voted to keep the LIN version, which is the same as the mask version. But in retrospect, I want to um, turn to the sort of second um, page on that, and you'll notice that it's really procedure. And so I wanted to, to you know, rather than sort of have detailed procedures and, and sort of, you know, the request must state the particular conflict involved is what it says in the current version. That's actually not a requirement of the law. And so uh, uh, you, the, poli the procedure that's in the policy is more um, constrictive than the law requires. And so what I want to recommend is that we add a line to the end of IHAM, exemptions from portion of health education will be allowed in accordance with mass state law. We just reference the law and not go into these procedures, which in part do conflict with the law. Okay. Um, and then finally, there is a policy IHAM-1-E, which is a sample notice to parents and guardians. I think uncontroversially not a policy document. Dorothy, I think that this probably didn't make it into the review and sort of slipped through the cracks. And I, I think uncontroversially we would rescind that as not a policy. And uh, so that's just a little bit of cleanup here tonight. An example letter, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, those are the, the proposed tweaks, just to be sure that we're uh, not vulnerable to any criticism whatsoever in this particular area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions okay. or comments? We nope. Good. All right. Um, seeing no questions. We got to move to I the next. Oh, internet. I'm sorry. We do. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Five and six. <laughs> five, six, and seven. Actually, right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, right, so Attorney Gallo, the next parts would be I N. Sorry, I didn't need my glasses on. I J N D B dash S, and then everything after that. Yes. So this is all technology. It is all okay. technology. All right. So I think um, what we might want to think about talking about first is, is um, within this is I J N D B, which is the current umbrella policy, and it follows immediately after my summary. And in working with Ms. Presser, I think that the recommendation is we, we rescind the, um, the IJNDB, not only because it doesn't match the model mask policy, but also we don't really have record that it was adopted. You'll see a note on the bottom of Dorothy's. Yeah. Um, yes. So it was found in the manual. We're not clear how it got there. Okay. In any case, moving forward, um, mask has a nice IJND, which would serve then as the... Um, umbrella policy it's called access to digital resources mm -hmm. and a team came together to um, you know just again make this limb specific but what you really see is we're uh, referencing you know <coughs> privacy laws and and the like um, should be pretty uncontroversial um, Kevin McHugh uh, was part of that team who is here today uh, as were our IT department Shannon Bansfield who's assistant director of curriculum and for um, uh, uh, technology as well as uh, several principals were involved uh, in the hope that this would not be too controversial we have even gotten a head start on administrative procedures and brought together a group last week that included secondary and elementary building based administrators to talk about who would do what and how we would implement this um, IJNDD IJNDD then is the mask version of the social media policy again with a couple of LIN tweaks but again things that shouldn't be uh, um, controversial uh, we, we don't we advise staff that they should um, be careful in, in improper fraternization with students sharing of information that's protected by FERPA sharing details of personnel matters those kinds of things and then finally is a revision to a previously adopted policy IJNDB-S, which is internet network and email responsible use and device care policy for students. And the change to that, if you go to the very back bottom page um, of that, is that the violation of policy provision now would say the superintendent or their designee may from time to time issue administrative protocols governing the application of this policy, including consequences for violations and so on, provide for trainings, develop administrative procedures, arrange for keeping of data. The existing version of this policy, uh, which a lot of work went into, 
had procedures in that section, mm -hmm. how much we were going to charge, if we were going to charge, is there going to be an educational opportunity, um, video, and just went into detail. And, and in retrospect, despite all the good work, has been really hard to put into place um, for practical reasons. And so those are the technology provisions. I'll defer to um, Mr. McHugh if there's anything to no, add. I think you summed it up pretty well. Okay. Yes, uh, Member Magnolia. Okay, so this is super splitting hairs, but right. yep. I, you have to forgive me for yep. a moment. And IJND, the final bullet point on page two, mm -hmm. shifts in voice from third person to second person, and it should be in third person. Dr. Magnolia, I am. I, I did not. I failed to tee up um, um, Dorothy Prester, who who <laughs> shares the concerns. And please. Yeah. Because my, my one comment about all the policies was, it's in the second person. <laughs> <laughs> and that sort of makes it feel like it's segueing from policy to procedure to one thing. Exactly, um, yeah. So that Procedural, the yeah. language should be changed back to the third person. Yeah, and that's true in IJNDD as well. It's yeah. Actually, so the, the last par the paragraph that you talk about is actually, I mean, th it's true that they're in, especially in IJNDD that it happens. Mm -hmm. But the paragraph that you're talking about is actually, I think, identical in both policies. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's the exact same yeah. language on yeah. both. Yep. It is. Um, which would you recommend is the more proper, appropriate place? I would suggest removing it to access to digital resources and keeping it in policy on social media. I think that's the right yeah. thing to do. Okay, so in IJND, remove the final bullet point. If you are communicating. Yeah, if you are communicating is the final bullet point. And then IJNDD needs to shift to third person. Yeah. Well, at least great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm like, voice change, voice did, change. That's not okay. I did point out that I thought the policy subcommittee would pick up on that. You, that is absolutely correct. It is, yeah. <laughs> well, one of us did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the one that teaches writing pretty much <laughs> constantly. Yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, no comments. I, I think it looks great. Okay. So I think now we're ready. Okay, so all I'd like, I? Yeah, I'd like to move, section I. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to move I as amended to the committee as the whole. Okay, second. Dugan? Yes. Yes. Just okay. to, um, as I go through the, the track changes version, if I make the change, the third person, you're fine with that? Yes. Yes, yes. that's fine. Thank you, Ms. Presser. Okay, next we have section J. Um, there's a few things here, so let's start with JF school admission. Sure, so JF is a uniquely Lynn policy. It ties directly to the um, uh, voluntary desegregation policy or voluntary desegregation plan that now exists. And, and you know, obviously tonight in this short time, we're not talking about that uh, larger policy. Yeah. And, and so to the extent that we're not talking about that at this particular moment, um, JF would remain intact because okay. it aligns with that policy with just one exception. Um, and uh, it is the TBE section at the very bottom refers to outdated um, language um, with regard to, uh, to L students. And um, uh, it is really also more procedure than it is policy. And so the recommendation from Amanda Campbell, uh, the interim chairperson, uh, interim um, uh, department head for MLE was to strike that language, so we're okay. here with that. And I want to defer to um, Deputy Superintendent Gorris as well, who was um, involved with uh, with this particular revision. If there's anything else on it, you know, that was all. Making sure that it's updated to the current policies. Okay. okay. May I just make a? I saw a couple yeah, he she in mm -hmm. the okay. current policy. Do you mind if that changes? No. no. And then in the very first paragraph, um, uh, the very last line, it says PIC Parent Information mm -hmm. Center is the correct. The correct. So welcome center. Welcome. We should change so that. The thank welcome you. center. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. anytime it says Parent Information mm -hmm. Center, it should say Welcome Center. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Find and replace. Mm -hmm. Never works as well as it should. No, it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> okay. 
Um, all right, so J, everyone good with JF? Yes. Good, all right. J-I-C-H, alcohol, tobacco, drug use by students prohibited. Yep, so, so what you have in front of you is the mask policy with one tweak, which is that uh, the mask policy uh, says that there shall be uh, a verbal screening tool administered on an annual basis at grades seven and nine. The statute actually uh, requires once in, in middle school and once in high school. So the recommendation and through Dorothy would be just to make that tweak. Um, Deputy Gora spoke with the nurses yesterday um, or, or I think last week the, um, in preparation for this and recommended the, the change as well. Yes, um, we reviewed to ensure that this is the screening procedure that's currently happening, and they confirmed that it happens once in middle school, once in high school. Okay, okay. great, thank you. So mm, just for Professor. clarification, um, the tool should be administered to each student once in middle school and once in high school? Is that accurate? Once middle school, once high school? Yeah, and, each student. and striking the seven and nine. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. is correct. Okay. Yeah, but to clarify that it's to each student, not that it's... I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes. Each, student. Student. each student. Okay. Do you mean in lieu of by trained staff, or do you want to add the words to each student after administered? Uh, this two shall be administered by trained staff to each student once okay. in middle school and once in high school. Okay. To each student. So after trained staff. Yeah, okay. after change. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. That's That makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, um, so seeing no more concerns of J-I-C-H. Uh, third one would be J-J-I-C-A. Uh, oops, which we did already. Sorry, move that to the top. Uh, so J-M, Student Awards and Scholarships. Thank you. Um, JM is is not a uniquely Lynn policy, but but um, I would say a minority number of districts have this policy, and, and Dorothy and I did speak about it. Um, so in looking at JM and whether Lynn should have the policy, we looked at other uh, districts that were, were similar to Lynn demographically, and actually Holyoke primarily was a policy um, that we liked a lot. Okay. And so working closely together, uh, myself, Deputy Gorris, um, uh, uh, our Assistant Director of Compliance, Lauren Walsh, and Colleen Peterson came up with this brief policy and it's really themes of equity and access the idea that um, you know the existence of a particular scholarship or award should not sit in a drawer it should be sort of made known and that everybody who is eligible to apply for it should have that equitable access to apply mm -hmm. and that there's no unlawful discrimination on the basis of any protected class membership and I'll defer again if there's um, anything beyond beyond those considerations. Just to make sure that it is public and accessible yeah. and that a family and or a student doesn't have to try and maneuver multiple people to get that information, right. but it's accessible. Mm -hmm. I think this, we discussed this we did. Yeah, yeah, at length about access, so I think right. this is simpler. It is, yeah, and being someone that went through this not too long ago, it, mm -hmm. this would help, this will help <laughs> families. Because mm -hmm. it was a bit confusing. Yeah at times yeah okay I'd like okay. to move section J uh, as amended to the full committee second Dugan? yes yes okay and then that brings us to section G which we're gonna look at all of it uh, or so we're gonna attempt to see how far we get and that's all personnel just give me a minute to yeah I think we need a minute to just organize our papers here <laughs> Thank you, Attorney Gallo. Yes, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, Attorney Gallo. It's a thank lot of you. work, so I appreciate that. It does make our life much easier. No, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's like a command center. I know. You do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so uh, Ms. Presser, I guess I'll let you lead the way here. All right. Section G, so personnel an, policy. 
a number of things happened between last meeting and this meeting regarding Section G. Okay. It was not ready to go, for one thing. Um, so it was in our offices, we did the merge that we do to get things ready. Um, and then it was sent to April Reed here mm -hmm. um, for her to look through it. Um, and in the meantime, we had a conference and <laughs> I got busy. Um, so um, Ms. Reed got back to me with all the information. For the most part, there's a pretty good alignment of our thinking on this section, which is really good. Um, is. So what I'm gonna go through, because you, I didn't get this until this morning, you didn't get it till now, her, till just now, her right. notes. Um, so I'll try to sort of carefully go through okay. um, the, the combined comments on all the different policies. Right. Um, but I think for the most part, we're in pretty good alignment on right. our thinking here. Appreciate that, thank you. Um, so GA um, personnel policy goals, as in most sections, that first policy in the section is sort of an overarching look at what's in the section. Mm -hmm. um, it is, um, uh, we. this is one where we don't have one like that in our policy reference manual. You have it. There's no reason to take it out if you like it mm -hmm. um, and if it matches your thinking. Um, I mean, I'm always for if it's not procedure and it helps us, then there's no reason to remove it, right? I feel the same way. Yeah. So keep GA. All right. GBA. Uh, so GBA is equal employment opportunity. Um, this is one where um, Ms. Reed provided your non-discrimination policy. Um, ours goes a little bit further than just the non-discrimination policy. Um, in talking about um, find, you know, matching each position to the applicant that is based on qualification, merit, and ability. Um, and so you might want to just add that to the end of your non-discrimination policy and use the non-discrimination policy as the equal employment opportunity policy. Did that make sense? It did. It okay. did. So, so if you look at the notes um, from April's, right. from April's notes, um, what you're looking at is really that first paragraph, the non-discrimination policy. Correct. The things below it are actually um, excerpts from the, the handbook, okay. which would not obviously be in policy because they're in the handbook. Those are in the handbook, yeah. right? Um, so I guess my suggestion would be if you wanted to use the the consistent statement um, of ev uh, that you're using for non-discrimination, that would be what you would put in the policy, maybe along with the sentence about um, taking into consideration merit ability and qualifications. Okay. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think I'm okay with that. And then the sentence, I guess, would have to craft it, right? I, just out of curiosity, yeah. Member Magnolia. can... What if we just got rid of the Lynn? Right, that's what I. Yeah, yeah and exactly. and just MASC. take yep. take the MASC and add, add in it. our non discrimination policy, and that just makes it. I easier. think that covers it. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yep. And and so the um, non discrimination policy would be after the every available opportunity will be taken in order to assure that each applicant for a position is selected on the basis of qualifications, yep. merits, and ability. And then it is the policy of the Lynn Public Schools not to discriminate on the basis of. Right, everything after okay. that. So it's it's the same list as is in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, might not match exactly. But that way we've covered every base possible. Yeah. Okay. okay. <coughs> Ms. Jules, did you get that? Yes. Okay. Well, I need to make sure I get it too, so. Okay, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That works. So um, school committee staff communications. Um, she, neither she nor I saw any reason to make any changes there. Yep. That works. Um, uh, staff, so staff conflict of interest. Um, she had some notes about um, adding the um, ethics training and so forth, which are actually already in the MASC version of the policy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think um, 
I think you <laughs> I would suggest in this one that um, take the MASC version. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, staff conduct, uh, what did I say about staff conduct? So the, um, the Lynn version has a list one through five. The MASC version originally had that list. We took it out um, because we felt like really what it looked like was a job description, but it's only a partial job description. Yeah. Um, so we left it at just the top three paragraphs. So really the direction is you go is at your discretion. Um, what did I write my notes? I said your discretion. So I wrote my notes to leave it. I'm trying to look at this last night. I'm trying to think of what my thinking was, though. I liked the list. Yeah. I think it just kind of goes in line with what I said earlier. If it's not procedural and... Not. If it's not affecting things, then we should probably keep it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. She did have a suggestion maybe of making it a paragraph, or, but not a list. But that, again, is that's more. I don't think that matters. It's more yeah. form over content. Agreed. So. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I'm okay with the list there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um. All right, so next we have GBEBC. Uh, so, and this is another one where um, she suggested that um, some of the things that she suggested were already included in the MASC version. Yeah, that's yeah I wrote a note I like the MASC version, Me too. so, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the difference between two sentences and an entire. It is. Yeah. Particularly, I mean, there were some updates to ethics. Commission findings and regulations mm -hmm. that are reflected mm -hmm. in the MASC version. So we're um, for GD, MASC version. MASC version, yep. right? Okay. Yep. Um, so I thought I heard some mention of this policy as we were getting ready for the meeting. So <laughs> um, this is one where the two policies take a bit of a different approach. Um, the uh, the Lynn version is um, is really covering. The, the things the proposal can't contain, mm -hmm. um, and the and the MASC version outlines the acceptable reasons to submit a proposal. Okay. Um, so and then gives also gives more information on what happens after the solicitation is made if it's a successful solicitation. So this may be one where you want to combine them. It would make kind of a long policy, but it might make sense to do. So I, I do have a recommendation yeah. to the chair. Um, of course. So I wanted to combine them, and I have numbers. Okay. This okay. This is the one we talked about earlier. Yes. Right. Okay. So if I may read the numbers you and may. just do the first sentence so that if you have both, um, you, can, you can follow along. Okay. Um, the first is school district employees shall comply. So that's from MASC. Yep. Okay. Okay. But at the end of that, it says... No online fundraising may occur except as provided below or prohibited below. <coughs> so those are words ended to the uh, added to the end of that sentence. Okay. <coughs> so provided or, or, prohibited. or prohibited. prohibited below. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. The second sentence in the MASC version should be struck. The second sentence. I mean the second paragraph. Second paragraph. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm doing my best to concentrate no, here because okay. I've got numbers and arrows. <laughs> okay. Should strike the superintendent shall I have final, final authority. Okay. Correct. Okay. Right. Then the actual second paragraph should read a Lynn public school professional may submit a proposal. Okay, so that would be the first paragraph in the Lynn version. Correct. Okay. So that would become paragraph two. Yep. All right. Paragraph three is in the Lynn version, and it starts with the if the proposal is denied, and then the bullet list. Okay, so that would all be three. Yep. Gotcha. Four starts back in MASC, any solicitation. Okay. Five is MASC, employees shall. Mm -hmm. Six is MASC, employees using. 
seven is employees may only use crowdfunding services. And eight is a combination of two of them. So eight starts out with the MASC. Okay. If an employee's proposal is approved by the crowdfunding service, the employee agrees to use the donated materials solely as stated in the employee's proposal. And then it also incorporates the Lynn one. If a proposal is successfully yep. funded, the author shall immediately notify the grants office. So that's all the eighth paragraph. That would all be part of the eighth paragraph. Okay. okay. The ninth paragraph is MASC if a solicitation is not fully funded. <clears throat> and that concludes the policy. The, the final paragraph on the LIN is struck. Okay. So just so I'm clear, nine would go on to include the second, the top of the second page in the MASC? Correct. Other, unless otherwise. But, okay. Yep. That's gotcha. why we can strike that part. That's why we can strike the LIN part. The LIN Wait, part. Correct. Yep. Okay. I missed something. Can you repeat that, please? Um, on the MASC version, nine is on, uh, continues on page two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, oh, got it, got Member it, got Dugan it. wanted to ensure that that was, and I that said yes. That's why we can struck strike that final on the LIN, because that second page covers it. Right. Yeah. And um, Ms. Jules, I'm happy to give you these if you need them. Okay. Good. <laughs> I have a lot of. <laughs> yes. Very well navigated. Nice. Well done. done. Nice. Okay. Done. Is, is that acceptable? That, yeah. You know what? I yeah, I like that. that okay. That is perfectly. Acceptable. Well, because I thought that that was a good balance of. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. So that leaves us with GBEC drug for drug free workplace policy. Which uh, so uh, the notes that were added to this one. So uh, I believe that what uh, it uh, so. This is Lynn's policy, mm -hmm. drug-free workplace policy. Mm -hmm. um, and the question from April was, should we include the LPS, that LPS requires new hires to be scheduled for a drug test, et cetera? Is that a procedure? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would think that's procedural and would be in yeah. the employee handbook. OK. Yeah. Am I wrong to mm -hmm. so that? Yeah, then okay. just leave this as it yeah, is. Because someday okay. we'll just be scanned. Our microchips will be scanned. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Pay, you know. Yeah, I know. It's all on our phones. <laughs> right. So we just want to add the MASC references, right? Correct. The okay. cross references, right? Yes. Okay. Otherwise, they match. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So the um, GBED. Um, there is the the there's more information in the MASC version about exactly what tobacco products uh, mm -hmm. are, and we talked about this also. It's the same list in the, we that did. we did in the student mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. version of the version of the policy. Um, the question that came up was, should we add information on vaping? It's actually in the MASC version because it, it talks about electronic pipes and other similar. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say in this one you want the more expanded MASC version. She also talks about being clear about where it occurs, which is a little bit more expanded in the MASC version. Okay. So where it occurs, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong here, that's state law, correct? That tobacco use... In school well, but, but a certain... it also said school-sponsored events. Right. Oh, oh, oh! I'm sorry. I thought okay. I thought you meant like so yeah. physically where. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Right, a dance was... or a prom or okay. I did not express that very well. No, that's okay. That's okay. So I think the MASC version. MASC version. What I agree. Yeah, I think that's a little more were. specific. So okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, so GB. G, staff welfare. Um, so the, this is one where we might be looking at a couple at one time. So Lynn's GBG is nearly identical to Lynn's GBGB. <laughs> Just okay. to twist our tongues up a little bit. Um, and I think that... Um, 
I think this is where she and I differed a little bit. All right. In that I felt like because GBGB refers to tuberculosis, which is that's outdated. It is. Um, that that would be the one to rescind and keep GBGB. It's more up to date. So GBGB, just so I'm clear, it's it actually falls under staff personnel security and safety. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. But are we doing Lynn or MS? Um, AC on GBGB. Well, I'm right now we just have to rescind GBGH, yeah. and then we talk about that when we, we get talk there. About when we get there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was just so looking at them side by side yeah. to make sure we're yeah. Yeah. So we're rescinding GBG. Yeah. Correct. And then we'll re. Yeah, then when, when we, we get, get to back GB. there. Right, yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, GBG-R, staff protection, looked very much like um, a procedure to me. Yeah. Agreed, yeah. Agreed. So I think mm -hmm. that should come out. So rescind that. Yeah. Okay. Um, GB, let me make sure I'm flipping all the right pages here. Um, GBGA, I believe that we both yes. agreed that that should come out. Yes. Yep. I have that as well. Um, as well as GBGA-R. Yep. Yep. Especially because it's got procedure in the title. Those are procedures. Good yeah. hint that it's procedure. Yep. yep. Um, so now we're to GBGB. Okay. Um, and... <coughs> There was the question about the employee assistant program. Yeah, yeah. And, I, uh, and that is actually in the MASC version. Is it Lynn's policy, though? Uh, I believe her note is that it is. Okay. That's the, yeah. That's um, provides all employees with the benefits of a, an employee assistance program. Members of your household. That's the, That was my question. It was also members of the household, so... So employee assistance provides a service to the employee, but they can access services, family. which is referrals for services for their families. Mm -hmm. Right. Which would suggest that we should adopt the MASC I, version. I agree, yes. yeah. So the talk with the families in that one makes it a yes. little more. All right, so adopt the MASC of GBGB. GB. Okay. okay. Um, so GBGC. So uh, let me see. Hold on one I think second. There's a skip here. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. I think we did. GBGB. MASC version. MASC. MASC version. Okay. Yeah. GBGC. That's what that's we're at. Where we're, that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So GBGC. Oh, I know. Mm. I know. They're tongue twisters, um, this they are, one. They are. <laughs> Not that so HCBDR <laughs> U isn't, but you know. No. Wow, um, this so old. this. this We're looking is at old. the names. This I know. is old. Yeah. yeah. This, I, it looked, to me, it looked like it predated Ed Reform and its yes. procedure. So. Yeah. So, so we're rescinding. rescinding. I would say rescind, yeah. Yes. GBGC. So GBGE is um, the domestic violence leave policy is an MASC. There is no Lynn version, and I think you should have I, it. I yes. agree. I think that's an important one. So yeah. I would say yes, adopt MASC. So the one question then that you might want to look at is the first paragraph under the, the one, two, three. The mm -hmm. employer shall have sole discretion to determine whether the leave is paid or unpaid. Some places just leave that so that the employer retains full discretion. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. change it to say will be paid, must use. Uh, so that's that's up to you. Yeah. Would it depend also on which union the employee yeah. is a member of, or if they are? No. No. I, no, I didn't know what leave policies policy. that they're yeah. consistent. From they are union okay. To union. So I would just ask if administration wants to leave this in or not. I agree. I think that's, yeah.
Yeah, I would definitely leave it. I mean, it's not, I think the only thing that I would um, recommend, I mean, we have, and Charlie, you may, can elaborate on this too, if ne necessary. I mean, we have um, our guidelines on FMLA mm -hmm. that are specific. So I don't know that we need all of this um, additional information in here. But if I were to take one, you know, I would, I would definitely, um, yeah, all of this is based in the Family and Medical Leave Act. Mm -hmm. So this isn't really like our Lynn policy is a federal policy that governs FMLA. But the domestic violence leave policy is not FMLA, it's a different law. GBGE. Are you talking about E or F? E. G B G E. I would I would um I would leave it. So we don't have one now. So yeah, yeah we so would be mask. I would leave the mask because you would we adopt the I mask. Would adopt adopt the mask. It. And okay. you're okay with the yeah. paid and unpaid. Yeah, if it gives her discretion. Yeah, it gives you discretion. Yeah. So I would think that would be okay. something you'd want, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so adopt the M A S C. Correct. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was one. No, no, I, I just I think that's one of those things that I don't know that I have the expertise to judge. I no, would I defer agree. to I, you I on that. No, I definitely do not. No, definitely do not. It's one thing if I'm combining two policies. It's another to say this is what you actually do. <laughs> Determining yeah. voice. Yeah, right. That's, that's, a, that's a whole other can of worms. Right, right. Okay, so that brings us to GBGF, which is, right, the Family and Medical Leave. Yeah, that's leave. the one I was Yeah, that's yeah. the one you yeah. were referencing. Mm -hmm. So I, I would, I, my recommendation would be to remove this one from the manual. I All it says is that you're going to comply the with the law. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, and there's the law there, so it doesn't yeah. really need yeah. to be in our policy manual. We need to follow the law. And the same thing with GBGFE. Because it's the procedure for FMLA. Right. Correct. So rescind GBGF E. Ms. Jules, did you get that? I did. Get okay. That. Okay. Especially because GBGF E is like 27 pages. It's a lot. <laughs> Your section G will be much more concise after tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's so exciting. It so, is. Um, GBI um, is one where there were. There were two versions. Sorry. Um, that mostly <laughs> matched the the in our the MASC version. We recently added in the second sentence of the first paragraph. Among these are campaigning for an elected public office or, or a ballot, ballot or initiative. Ballot initiative. Just to clarify that uh, you know the political activity included ballot initiatives as mm -hmm. well as okay. running for office. Other than that, I believe the policies are the same. Other than yep. that, MASC has the, the the that ending sentence under oh, no circumstances yeah. will students be pressured. Right. Like. Also, the MASC version has the public employees are prohibited under state law from soliciting funds for political campaigns. Mm -hmm. Right. I like. Well, it's state like law. I like MASC. Yeah. yeah, I think MASC clearly, it's just. Yeah, it covers the entire. It, I, yeah. I think it covers it all. And I think yeah. the stat, I mean, from what I recall from my ethics training, this is all part of that as well. Yes. The yeah. state ethics, yeah. right? So, yeah. okay. Okay, so GBJ personnel records. This one was confusing yes. to me. Yes, um, and it was confusing to everybody. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Um, Let's work through it. I'll catch up to myself here. Um, the, it looked like there were two versions in the Lynn Policy Manual. Um, and um, the, the one of them was a better match to the MASC version, except for some wording differences um, that, you know, we say school district instead of school system and yep. in in the, in the um, pronouns. But it was, it was the bullet six, list of school system employees' names and home addresses will be released only to governmental agencies as required for official reports or by law, mm -hmm. um, is the additional one that was in 
one of the LIN versions and the M MASC version. Okay. Well, there's a oh, truncated there's version in the other one, so number six and number five are oh, yeah, number roughly five. Yeah, similar. Yeah, roughly the yeah. same. <laughs> I think it's employees may make written objections. Yeah. That's yeah. different. Number right, number five, five on the four. second one. Four mm -hmm. and five on that document are. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Ms. Preston, just so I get this right, you're saying keep the version that has the six? Yes. Bullet points? Okay. Yes. With changes to s system as to district. District, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. that. Yeah, okay. Okay, staff complaints and grievances. Uh, where am I? Looks like these are matching. Yes, they are. All right. Matched. How about that? So, so we so keep the No action. <laughs> no action needs to be Rare taken. Rare event sometimes. <laughs> this is an interesting one. I know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I, both of us recommend rescinding this one. Yes. Okay. Um, because, I mean, first... It's interesting, I looked up school nurse recognition, it's actually in May. <laughs> um, and there's no, I mean, there's no other staff, you don't have any other policies about any other staff recognition. Any other staff recognition, right, like administrator's week, week or whatever it might be, right. Yeah. Yeah. Teacher right. appreciation week, there's yep. nothing. <laughs> I would take that. Not yeah. that you can't so still recognize your nurses. We but. obviously would love to recognize our nurses, but I don't know if we need to <laughs> so yeah, have it in our rescinding policy. Rescinding that one. Yes, or rescind yes. that. Um, so GCA, um, professional staff positions, what were the, bear with me a second while I catch yep. up on my notes here. Take your time. Um, so there was a little bit an, of an expanded, um, I think this is one where you might want to combine or you might want to just take the MASC version. The biggest difference um, was um, the, the paragraph, the school committee is at liberty to add qualifications. That would be the case whether it was in policy or not because the school committee approves, approves the job description. Correct. Yeah. So if the school committee wanted to have particular qualifications, the committee is certainly at liberty to do right. that. If you want to keep that specifically in policy, there's no reason to take it out. Um, I, I would go with the MASC version. Yeah. It, it seemed overly complicated, yeah. the Lynn version, especially the, the most practical time to discuss and make decisions about above and beyond is on the occasion of seeking app. It, it just... It, yeah. It's quite a bit. Yeah. I agree. And it, and it already says the mask one in the second yeah. uh, paragraph. Right? It does. Established right. committee and or existing position is modified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think mask... A check mark on it. I do too. Yeah, yeah. so I would say let's take mask on that one. All right. Um, GB, GCB. All right, so GCB is just so I have this GCB. right professional staff contracts and yep. compensation plans. Okay. So this is a LIN policy only. Um, I felt like the content is actually covered in other places and in the section on negotiations, yeah. which we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this could be rescinded. I, I agree. I agree. I do remember talking about that policy with negotiations. So. Yeah. And then dash rescind GCB. And then dash R. That would mean R would also be rescinded. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So GCB and GCB R will be rescinded. Yep. So professional staff salary schedules, I, this is one where our opinions may differ a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, the comment from April was that the salary schedules are determined by union, union contracts and individual contracts, which is true. Um, but the policy, but this policy really says that it's within the purview of the school committee to be establishing those. Um, so I think that this might be one you might want to think about mm -hmm. keeping. keeping. Yeah, I agree. I think it's important to know that the school committee does have the ability to do that. Yeah, the the, the there is an MASC and there is a Lynn version, 
the Lynn version used to be the MASC version. Mm -hmm. um, we just combined principals and administrators on individual contracts because it's really the same information for both. Mm -hmm. I, I like the Lynn version. And keep it then. Keep yeah, it. I would say keep the Lynn version as well. Okay. I think that's also what I wrote last night. So, yeah, make sure my two brains are in alignment. <laughs> Um, so employment of principals, um, we have recently, this is another one where we might differ a little bit. Um, again, this is, um, I believe the Lynn version is the former MASC version. Ours is updated because the law has changed that the sub successor contract for principals can actually be longer in length than three okay. years. think we should go with MASC yeah I think it's a little more updated mm -hmm. yeah. 2022 it looks like you were updated on that one yeah. so yeah I would say MASC on that okay uh, so GCBC so um, GCBC um, where is her, where are her notes? Um, so this is one I think this is really at your discretion. Mm -hmm. um, you, have, you have information that's in the collective bargaining agreements, um, and you want to make sure that there is not a conflict that, that they match, right, yep. that, that the content matches. The one thing that I often find myself pointing out to when I'm working with committees is um, this, the last sentence of the first paragraph, when such supplemental assignments require extra time and responsibility beyond the regularly expected of teachers, they will be rewarded with extra compensation. That's a, cons that we have may in ours, and that's sort of a consequential little word difference. It is, so yeah, it is, it is. Um, so we'll be held to the fire on that one. Um, I guess. Maybe the administrative team, maybe help with Will, May. I, I would say May. May? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's not every situation, right, would, would require. Would dictate that, right. Yeah. Yeah. And a will means. Will. It's got to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's got to happen. Will, will shall. They must will. shall. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. All right, so keep that with the last sentence changing will to May. Yeah. Okay. Um, G, B, S, J, D. I'm going to twist things around here. GCBD. Jeez, thank you. <laughs> um, professional staff fringe benefits. I think we both reached the conclusion to remove this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say remove that as well. And professional staff leaves of absence. Uh, we also both, I think, felt that that should be removed. Yeah. Yep. April has that as well, and I'm okay yeah, with it. Removed. Yep. Uh, then request for leave of absence. I think we both thought that could be removed. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, sick bank regulations, by virtue of being regulations, can be removed. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, because that seems more precise. So where would this, I guess my question is, where would this, I did write that, where would this fall? The it's sick usually bank? in the um, collective bargaining it's, agreement. Because that yeah. is something <laughs> we want to make sure contract. our staff is aware of. It's CBA. A, that's in the contract, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this would be more procedural. Right. These yeah, are the this version of the administrative procedures that we follow. Right, but right. But the language of having it is in the contract. Okay. So our staff would be aware just via their contract. Oh, they know. Okay. Right. And <laughs> in the recent review of our procedures for HR um, and or lack thereof, right? We've developed um, some forms, and so part of the form would be what's the procedure, Okay. right? So that would be very clear and outlined, like these are the steps that you have to take, and this is what you need to submit to request a sick bank okay. donation okay. or a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think that's where that lives. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just felt it was important that we got that yeah. out there on that one. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, G double C double A dash R. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we both thought that this one can be removed. Yep. You said it so eloquently too. I know. I know. We're just gonna get rid of it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, GCD. 
I, I just had a quick question. GCBE is listed here, but there's nothing in it. Was that one that we came back to? GC or free or gift. So it's it's here, but it's not in it. It just. Um, that could be because I use a template. Oh, okay. It, and it could be, and somebody else had that. In okay. The policy manual. Sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. I just want to make sure that something no. didn't get left out. No. Okay. Thanks. Um, Sorry. GCD. No, okay. Let's no, that's go. Fine. GCD. That's all right. Uh, GCD. Um, again, this is something that uh, I thought we both thought could be removed. Yep. Yep. Um, GCE. On this one, the two versions matched. Except um, for some wording. GC, except for some, yeah, minor wording. Um, April thought maybe this could be removed. Okay. Um, that's really, I think it's really at your discretion. Um, um, again, I think I'd fall back on if it's not procedural and it's not we're not opposed to having it there. I would think we keep it. I, I just like the MASC version better. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be fine with that part of it. In terms of the wording? Yeah, the, the wording, wording change. Yeah. 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 I guess I must. They have okay. licensure. Yeah. 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 Rather than certification. Yeah, correct. just a, sort okay. of an update of the, the term of art at the. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess that's the. I was looking at the MASC reference manual thinking it was policy, but it's not. That's mm -hmm. what I meant. Yep. Um, okay, so hold so, on to GCE. So we'll, we'll keep GCE just with the changes MASC. With MAS. the yes. MASC yes. reference yes. changes, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so GCE B, let me make sure. Um, I, we both agreed this should be removed. Yes, I agree. Okay. Mm-hmm. GCF, um, so this is one where we might disagree a little bit. She wondered if this could be removed. Um, uh, this one is, this. Um, the MASC version has a little bit more information about yes. how people get hired and screening committees mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I would lean towards keeping it and keeping the MASC version. Yeah, I wrote the same. Um, I think we've had some discussions lately on the committee of things of that nature, so I think it's important to have that there. Okay. So The committees and the screening committees and you know what exactly we're a part of. Remember so, Magdalena, I yeah, yeah, so yeah. just my, my question is, <laughs> it's, it's hard to ignore in the Lynn the giant bold sentences <laughs> yeah. um clearly the giant bold sentences are an attempt to ensure mm -hmm. the power of the school committee i have no problem not having giant bold sentences i just want to call attention to the fact that in adopting the masc version there are no there are no giant bold sentences. yeah 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 i was sentences i'm sorry there. I, it's the same sentence is there, so it's not giant and, and it's not bold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the same size font and it's not darker. It's not screaming right. It. Right. It's, it's not. Yeah. It so is I not. Just... Yeah, so I would recommend the MASC version I, of GCF. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody at some Someone's point wanted at to make a point. <laughs> I know. Um, um, so G C they didn't, like switch to wingdings all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah. I know. G C G where am I? GCG is a okay. mouthful right there. Yeah, so GCG, um, a, so I it looks like part-time teachers is really not something, it, the Lynn version has part-time teachers. It looks like that's not your practice anyway. That's not, it wasn't the practice previously, yeah. but since COVID, it is. It okay. is. Okay. So we may want to think about not, Making it so we can't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. Again, not procedural, so I see no reason to to remove it. Yeah. Okay. 
Just so keep the Lynn version. Well, I just have a question yeah. for the yeah. superintendent or deputy superintendents. Um, the, the first paragraph of the MASC version, to me, would be better as a lead into what we do. Because what we're talking about here are sort of details. I mean, that, that, that third paragraph is very... Um, I don't know. I, I just I like the MASC first paragraph better than the Lynn one. I think it still covers right uh, teachers substitute teaching positions. Oh, it's the same, isn't it's it? It's the same. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So what I'd like to do is make it first. I think there's something about putting that before you put the specific teachers. I know that seems like it's splitting hairs. No, that's all right. That's why so, we're here. Yeah. So on put on it the, first under the substitute teacher sub. So basically, in the Lynn version, take the third paragraph and make it the first paragraph. Above? Above part-time teachers. Yeah. Okay. So that third paragraph, the one that begins the school system will employ. Yeah, I, okay. I think it's, yep. I just, I, I, I misread it. I just liked that as a starting out thing, because it was like, this is our overall thing about how we're hiring. Right. And then it went into the details of part-time part teachers substitute. and substitute mm -hmm. teachers. Done. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. Um, GCGA, I want to say we both agreed. That's procedural. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, that wasn't on her list, but it looks, it's procedure to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So rescind GCGA. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, GCI. Um, so this is one where we, again, we may differ a little bit. Um, professional development opportunities. Oh, this may not be the one where we differ. Um, this to me looked like it um, could be removed, and she agreed it could be removed. It looked to me like it predates the educator evaluation mm -hmm. model, so it's somewhat dated. And the PD opportunities do live in the contract? With well, the you have GCIA coming up. Oh, which thank is you. A more right. general policy. Which is statement. more general. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So rescind GCI. Yes. And then we'll, okay. Yeah. We'll take a look at GCIA. Yep. Um, and this is one where the two versions essentially match except for some minor wording differences. Um, and we do not have, we used to have four and five. We no longer have four and five in our reference manual. Okay. And my question was, do we use four and five? I, I just didn't know. There has been cases in the past where someone who, let's say, were getting their doctorate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that they were awarded, you know, allowed to do a leave of absence um, in order to do that without yeah, we, any penalty. We currently have someone doing that. Yeah. So just so leave them in. So leave them in. Yeah, and so just, I would say leave just them change in. system to district. That's it. Okay. And That's we also have. Um, I just the graduate study research travel are just examples. We have teachers that have to do like internships to actually graduate. Or actually, my daughter just did that right, last or, year. Yeah. She had to take a leave of absence yeah. for a year so to do her internship her somewhere internship. else. So. Do you think there's wisdom in including a more comprehensive list? Is that what you're saying? Or leaving it as a leave of absence for graduate study. Right, like or even undergrad for the educators, BA, right? They do an internship as well. Right. Sometimes so they have to. Especially where we're doing grow our own educators yeah. right. now right. with paras. Who exactly. Are so if they were a right. para and they would absence. have to leave for 12 weeks, for okay. example. Leave of absence to further their education? I mean, I, I just make oh, it something that broader. Language, Dorothy, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I think we could just say leave leaves of absence for study, period. Yeah. Let's just get rid of graduate. Yeah, we don't want to exclude someone who's, you know, trying Another to complete. Graduate. A degree for mm -hmm. to actually be a teacher exactly it defeats and I, our purpose it yes. really does yeah and then the partial payment of tuition for approved courses is that still is that in effect practice? we do it for um fellows okay i don't know that we have been doing it in general 
Okay. It's, it's typically part of a fellowship program with a accredited college or university. Or maybe like if applicable. Or well, I mean, these are all which they're um, all yeah. they're all sort of if applicable, right? So yeah. if True. you might do it, then, then I would leave it. It does say it for approved yeah. courses, right? So. It does. Yeah. So so all the only change is that number four just now says leaves of absence for study, and then we've changed school system to district. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Are we keeping research and travel with four or no? Or just that kind of gets absence. embedded okay. in. Okay. No, it just says leaves of absence for study, for study because okay. the assumption is that research is for study and travel is for right. study. Is for t t yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Because, I mean, as much fun as it is to just go visit the south of France, I don't think this covers just going to visit the south of France. <laughs> I'm going to take that off my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm misunderstanding a philosophy of staff nice. development, yeah. in which case, Bonjour. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I am developed into. <laughs> Remember Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> Raining on everybody's parade. <laughs> All right, so. GCJ? Did I skip something? No. No. Nope. GCJ. Okay. So the two versions again match, except for some um, highlighted differences. Why do we have these giant bold statements? <laughs> and like June fifteenth, and like I don't understand this. I don't know. Must have been a reason at some point. Well, you can direct me to unhighlight if you. <laughs> I, I I would like to I'll take it out. I mean that's. Well, one of the interesting things that, that a lot of folks don't think about is how screen readers read different font changes, bold mm -hmm, changes, mm -hmm. et cetera. So what might be a kind of like interesting emphasis to us to a screen reader signal something very different. So I, I think it should be avoided at all costs unless there's a very <coughs> specific reason for it because our visually impaired folks don't need to be yelled at for teachers and certain other professional employees. You know, this is there's no need for that. Okay. Just like the school committee having yeah. power. Yeah, we don't there's no need to yell that. that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's fine for me. So just unbold and highlight it, and unbold and unhighlight well, it. Excuse I, me. Yeah, the highlights always come. The highlights, that's right? Yeah, that's come through. But, but okay, so un leave it in, but unbold it. Le right. So keep GCJ, but unbold that first sentence. And okay. unbold June fifteenth. Yeah. And, and yeah, just out of curiosity, is that June 15th date go s consistent in the collective bargaining agreements in perpetuity so we don't need to worry about that changing? Okay, then yeah. yeah uh, that no, was my only question. That's part of the standard. The standard, yeah. Yep, then mm -hmm. I'm good. Um, GCJA is not a policy. Okay. We can take it out. Should we get rid of that? Yep. Um, GCK, where are we? It's just fixing language. Yeah, so your notes just uh, say language. Interesting that um, April thought this was procedural, procedural and could be removed. And this is something that we have in our reference manual. Yeah, I mean, my thought is if it's in MASC. I don't think this is procedural I, at all. Yeah, I don't think it is either. I would say keep it, GCK. Okay. Yeah. Yep. With the, with the changes, with the changes. And jet language. Yep. yep, with the highlighted changes. Yeah. Right. Um, professional staff time schedules. I think we both thought this could be removed. Mm hmm. So it's all contractual. Yeah. Um, GCM, she believed I was confused by it. She was confused by it. Um, there's probably a history to it, but I think at this point it could be removed. You can't be a teacher in two different schools. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Can't be a full time teacher in two different schools at the same time. time. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we can remove that. Yeah, I think it's safe to say remove GCM. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so GCO, so the uh, GCO is one where um, 
April thought it could be removed because it's in the union contracts, but I do want to point out that not all professional staff are necessarily covered mm -hmm. by union contracts. Mm -hmm. They could be on individual contracts. And right. this is um, uh, intended to cover all professional staff mm -hmm. and align with the model for educator evaluation. Mm -hmm. So I would, and it's also one where the two match. So yeah, I, I just would leave it. Yeah, I would say leave it. Mm -hmm. GCO. Um, GCQ, I think it's one where we both thought that it didn't was not policy <coughs> that could be removed. Yep. I agree. Okay. Um, GCQA, where are we? This is a this is a Lin one only, mm -hmm. um, and it I think that a lot of this would be covered in a uh, collective bargaining mm -hmm. agreement. Correct. This was in CBA. So, um, uh, her note was that it needs to be updated, and I'm not sure whether you want it at all. Well, she's talking about bumping and bidding, but it's not in this. So that's what I was. So we no longer have. Yeah, we no longer right. have. Yeah. Right. She's saying we no longer have it. Yeah. But. There is um, where this is talking about reduction in force, and when you get to reduction in force, seniority does yeah. become does. an element, and mm -hmm. therefore bumping could happen. But right? that's in the contract. But it's in the contract. Right. There's yeah. a section There's no around reduction we, in we force. We wouldn't do anything outside of the contract anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the then. one thing in here, um, maybe in contract language or not was um, uh, the opportunity for re-employment. It's the next to the left paragraph. have to look paragraph. at the contract. Yeah. I'm what year, what, do we know when this was? That goes adopted? back to, so <laughs> when I was hired in 1985, <laughs> uh, they were just starting to bring back from the mass loss during Proposition 2 and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that that's probably in play because there was such a big loss of staff in that situation, mm -hmm. and they wanted to ensure that staff could return and had two years of a cushion that we will take you back if within these two yeah. years we're still hiring, that you would be considered before we hired someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we haven't had that happen mm -hmm. since then. Um, that doesn't mean it couldn't doesn't happen. doesn't mean it can't happen. In, in the collective bargaining agreement, is there a provision for um, first best qualified? Do, do you have that in yours? So the new contract does have a, like a grid with a point, a point system, basically, um, because we changed away from bumping and bidding and seniority dates to this hiring, yep. um, applying and hiring that if there's a reduction in force, um, although seniority does play a factor, there's a point system based on evaluation, based on attendance, um, that uh, you potentially could have someone who has less of a seniority date because they had more points because they never use sick Records, time, for right. example, versus someone who's using their sick time at great lengths. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for, for us, first best qualified means any person in the system applying for any job in the system is considered first best qualified, meaning they get priority because they're in the system. So that's like a provision of our contract that if you've, been, if you've worked in the system, you're considered first best qualified for any job application. So in the new system of Hi, uh, applying and interviewing yep. within house, mm -hmm. we do have procedures where uh, we have to interview at least three in-house people. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the most senior of any anyone can apply. Yeah. There's a requirement that you have to interview at least th at least three mm -hmm. in-house. The most senior of all that applied has to be guaranteed an interview. 
So I don't know if that's getting to no, what you're saying. It's a, it's it's what I'm saying is more like this paragraph, which is, you know, if if I decide I want to be mayor of Lynn for two years and then I don't want to be mayor of Lynn two years and I want to reapply, but I'm going to apply to Northern Essex because I've worked in the system, I'm considered a first best qualified candidate. So I'm going from North Shore to Northern Essex. My experience in the system if I stay in the same union, makes me a better candidate than if I went to Dean College, which is private. It, that it doesn't matter because it's, you know, not in the system. Yeah, I don't know that. We okay, so that. we call that first best qualified, which is that you, if there's a reduction in force or you know some other thing. So that's that's why I was asking because I think this is unique. Then I don't think it's covered in a collective bargaining agreement, right? So if we were to keep this. It might just be that paragraph. All certified personnel yep. terminated for purposes of reduction in force may be considered for reemployment as vacancies occur, occur in positions for which they are qualified. Opportunity for reemployment will be extended for two years to personnel in the reverse order of the termination order above. If recall is refused, the staff member's name will be dropped from the list. That I think we should keep if, if we still would do that. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's almost like a safety net should exactly. things go south on us here. Yeah, mm. so we could strike everything else and just keep that as our reduction in professional staff workforce policy because the rest is covered by the collective bargaining agreement. Oh, you have to uh, but... remove um, in that paragraph where it says reverse order of the termination above. order above. Oh, yeah, right. so we just say a reverse order of the term of the termination order, period. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's reasonable. What do you think, Dorothy? I'm, I'm just trying to think about that there are professional staff who are not teachers, right? So. Um, well, this doesn't say anything about teachers versus. Right. Right? It's just right. certified personnel. Right. That's it. Right. So, I, yeah. So. That's why Would I want to be get all rid of it. certified and qualified personnel, and that way the qualified side relates more to a non-educator that they're qualified for the professional position. Would that make a difference? I, I'm going to defer to you here because you understand the terminology better than I do. I think do. when you see, when you yeah, I see where Dorothy's going. Like, yeah. Certified immediately brings you to educator to a teacher, and correct. instructional. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, to your point, there are non-educator non professional staff. Yeah. Got it. And yeah. that's why I'm okay. wondering if we say all qualified, um, all certified and qualified personnel, yep. Yep. then we're hitting both right. lanes. Right. Yep. You know, reference okay. the other so staff. So, do you have this now? Do you want me to reread it just to ter double check? You just so you're want that with paragraph, paragraph as is. one, two, three, and four, and you're going to start yes. with all certified and qualified personnel. Correct. Correct. And then we get rid of the word above. Correct. Otherwise, it's just that paragraph. Gotcha. And that's that's okay with. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank Sorry you. that took a while, but no, 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 that's why we're here. Thank you. So just above. Okay. Well, this is another. Okay. Um, so GCQD, I think there's agreement that this one can be removed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be in a contract. As well as GCQE. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, GCQF. Where did we go? Um, so this is another one where uh, I think we have to remember that not all um, professional staff members are teachers um, because April's notes was it's covered in the CBA so it could be removed but I think this is one where we need to <coughs> remember that there are right there's professionals that aren't yeah protected the two, by the, the CBA two, the right. two versions the MASC and the Lynn version match except for school system versus school district I think just I mean, again I would say keep it yeah and can you unbold, unbold superintendent? superintendent. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I can do that. It's safe to say, unbold things. Right. Um, so GCRD, 
um, is another one where um, there is uh, a LIN version and an MASC version. Um, where did it? Mm -hmm. Where did mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm losing my place. Um, I think this, this is one where uh, April thought maybe it could be removed because uh, it, it it's a, a, a adheres to policy and procedure. This is one where there have been some changes in the regulation from the Ethics Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the MASC version captures those um, captures those regulations and it's probably a good idea to have it in policy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. I think we keep it. But the MSA. The MASC version. I mean, yeah. MASC. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So C, excuse me, GCRD MASC version. Yeah. Um, GDA. Um, So it, this is one where it looks like there were two versions of the policy, and the only difference is the opening paragraph <coughs> is in one version and not the other. Mm -hmm. um, either one is appropriate. I like the four paragraph one. I do too. So the first one that we had in our packet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one keep. Version. There's two LIN versions. Yes. There's two LIN versions. There's <laughs> just one that's the MASC reference changes. So we're going to. So we're going to use the four paragraph LIN one, but right. we're going to change system to district. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. GDB. GDB. Um, I think that we thought that this one be removed. So we had two and now we're going to zero. <laughs> <laughs> two? Three. Wait a second. Two. Am I am I reading things two. wrong here? Wait. No, there's three. There's three. Yeah. three. There's three. There's two Lin versions in a and an, an MASC M version. C yeah. version. Oh wow. Make sure I'm just make sure I'm telling you the right thing here. Um, April's comments was this is all covered by union contracts. So rescind all three. <laughs> so we're saying rescind all three. I think you could safely. Well, technically, we haven't adopted the MASC version, so we don't right. need to rescind LINS 2. Yeah, LINS 2. And then, but I do like in the MASC version where that third part says school committee will set the rates of pay for personnel not covered by collective bargaining agreements. And then it gets into just some more specific, like overtime and mm -hmm. how to handle all those things, which I think would be important to keep in the MASC version of this. Who, who constitutes support staff? Mm. So clerical staff, yeah, it could be yes. so. Custodians. They could be administrative. Could be, could be administrative. not yeah. administrative. Yeah, it could like be any cafeteria workers, support staff. Yeah. So yeah. everyone who's a support staff is covered by a union contract. No, not. Um, yeah, so I mean, if they're not all covered by the union contract, we need a policy. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm asking. I don't think they are. In my experience, they're not. But then you um, have some staff who staff are on contract but not in a union. Not a CBA. Right. Okay, right. Yeah. then yeah. I would say we keep the MASC version. We get right. rid of the two LIN ones. Right. Grant so employees. like Welcome Center, there are staff, yeah. there are True. positions yeah. that True. are not in a union. Yeah. Annual contract. Um, in HR, yeah, there the are year some year. positions okay. that are not in a union. They're on contracts, but right. they're not in a union. Operational staff who are on right. their own annual so contracts, but not a right. union contract. Not a union contract, right. right. So then if you want to keep the MASC version, we should make sure that the statements about overtime are correct. So that would bring me, yes. 
so of these people that are not in the CBA, do, is there um, an ability to earn overtime for them in their contracts? I would think it's case by case. And some of them, if they're contractual employees, they may not have sick leave or vacation time. Okay. Depending on what they're doing. Say that again. If they're contractual, like there may be a contract. Yeah, we tend to follow on contracts. For full time? For full time, yes. So what if we just strike the overtime provision? So then I think what you're getting back to is the second Lynn version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's the same. It's the pretty much the same thing the same without the overtime. Without the overtime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep that one. So, so then that's the one For with all contracts. Th three paragraphs, not four paragraphs. Correct. correct. So it's the second one in our packet, correct? That yeah. says all contracts. That says all contracts, right? Oh wait, does no. it? Hold on. No, 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 not that one. I'm sorry. So it's the one that references one that says. Just know it has three paragraphs at the GD. bottom. This policy was found. Yeah, GDP. Yes. This policy yep. was found in the Lynn Online Policy Manual. But so not the materials. materials. That's the one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All, con all contracts. Got it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not sure what you're looking at. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So one one more cursory glance to make sure this is true of everybody who is considered support staff. Mm -hmm. Responsibilities of the position, qualifications needed, past experience, reviewed annually for compensation for all categories. And if they're in bargaining units, we do that. And then rates of pay not con that that's the simple answer, right? That right. the school committee. The school committee okay. Yeah. Those, I just want to make sure yes. now that we've yeah. looked at that actually makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen different versions. <laughs> okay. D B C Well you get lost, right? You Forest do. in no, the I, trees. I like agree. make sure we don't want to mess no, this you up. Want, no, we don't. When is the next time we're gonna look at that? <laughs> Really, let's be honest. Could be a while. Yeah. Right? What were they back in the 70s? And but that's know. what I mean. Two more minutes to make sure that's exactly what uh, no, we No, I have want. no problem with it at all. Okay. No problem. Um, so G, B, G, D, B, C. Which, by the way, you transposed in your notes. I'm dying. <laughs> I knew what you meant, but I was like, ah, B, D. Yes. Oh, yeah, GDBC. I think there's okay. a little bit yeah. of dyslexia okay, gotcha. in my life. <laughs> well, I don't know how anybody keeps all these letters <laughs> nice. yeah. um, in a so row. So <laughs> if you look at what it says, it's basically the, the policy, the, one of the versions. The, it was just about the, overtime. It's the overtime the version that we yeah. just nixed. It's the so overtime version we just, just nixed, so it. I would so strike that. So we can just nix it. Yep. That was a long way to say something simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, GBDB. Um, I believe we both agreed that, uh, well, April thought it could be removed. I felt like it was um, at your discretion, but I would lean towards removal too, actually. I don't know anything about it, so I'm gonna defer. Yeah, I guess uh, I would refer to the administrative team as well here. I, I would remove it. Remove I'd it? Remove okay. It okay. So remove GDBD. I, right. I felt with a lot of these, like I didn't know enough to know. I agree. It started to get <laughs> very little, in the weeds. <laughs> yeah. a, little of, a little above my pay grade. HR, HRE. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. this is one where April thought it could be removed. I would lean the same way um, because I feel like the leaves of absence that are covered by law, you've already covered in We've previous covered. contract. Mm -hmm. and, um, Anything, even it would either be covered in a union, a CBA, or in an individual contract. Okay. Correct. Okay. So rescind GDC. Rescind. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. We're almost there. Did you really think we'd get through this tonight? You guys are oh, doing great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is my early mission. birthday present We're for Eric. <laughs> yes. Very early, but that's okay. Um, so this is another one where. Um, there is an MASC version. It pretty much la matches the Lynn version. Um, 
April thought that it would be covered by union contracts, and I think it would either be covered by union contracts or in an individual contract, so it could be removed. Yes. 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 I would say the same, yep. Um, GDE. Hang on, let me flip pages here. Um, I think that I, th I think we, I, again, I lean towards removal, and um, so did April on this one. Mm -hmm. Sure. And April's reason is that um, HR posties anyway, yeah. 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 Yes. So I would say remove, okay. <coughs> um, support staff hiring GDF. Um, again, yes, I think we both lean towards right. removal on this one as well. Similar reasoning there. HR does post those, okay. Yeah. Um, GDI. Um, she wondered if the collective bargaining agreements would override this. Um, I don't. I think this is one where it's up to you whether you leave it in place or not. Um, contracts do have a ninety day in yeah. the seventeen thirty six mm -hmm. contract. Right. I believe all of our contracts have. Uh, even the teacher in co teacher's yeah. contract is a 90 it's day. It's a 90 day. Well, 90 days is a lot less than six okay. months, which it says yeah. in this. It says six yeah. months in yeah. this, right? Yeah. So rescind I, GDI? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's fine. So. Yeah, I. Okay. I it would live in the CBA anyway, right? Yeah. I, I just didn't feel like I knew enough to know one way or another, yeah. so I'm just I going feel with the, the same flow way here. About <laughs> a lot of these as we're going here, yeah. Yeah, this is like, as a contract negotiator person, I'm like. I'm not touching that one. I'm just going to go with what you mm -hmm. recommend. Mm -hmm. um, this is one where uh, April thought it could be removed, um, and I could go either way. I, I would also lean toward removal, actually, though. I would as well. We covered the um, district-wide assignments in, the, in another policy. We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right, so we send GDJ. All right, GDK. I think we're... Um, Leaning towards rescinding that yep. as well. Yeah, yep. it's all covered in the CBA. <laughs> so yep. rescind GDK, okay. GDO, again, it's also in the CBA, yeah. so rescind GDO. Okay. See, I told you you'd have a thinner section after tonight. <laughs> you are, I know. Um, GDP, same thing. Same thing, that's all in there. Collective bargaining uh, agreements, G okay. G uh, retirement of support staff, GDQC, again, rescind the way we looked at professional staff, go to the same parallel yep. for retirement mm -hmm. and um, GDQD um, again this is a Lynn policy only uh, April feels it's covered in the CBA in their contracts yes. yeah yep I would think it would be okay. that's okay. it I would like to move section G to the full committee with the changes as noted second Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Do we need Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Next week. So I believe this for MASC, this was the last I think yes, it was. section. Yeah. Um, I would like to hopefully just kind of maybe work with Attorney Gallo a little bit to make sure that what I have matches what he believes the policy manual should be. Okay. Um, I, at the very outset of this, before the two of you were on the policy subcommittee, when we started this project prior to the pandemic, um, the original plan was that MASC would begin the hosting of the policy manual. Yes. Um, given, um, the work that we've needed to do over the course of the manual with, you know, the policies are online, they're in one place or another. I mm -hmm. think it would help the district keep things much more consolidated and current okay. and um, very little cost. And I think it would be time well spent. It also means that people can do a keyword search of the, you know, either by code or by mm -hmm. word um, mm -hmm. of the manual rather than it's one long PDF for each section, which can be cumbersome yeah. to manage, it, it is, so. yeah. When you go to print it, too, it's, yeah. Um, yep. So just so I'm clear about this, this would be, on our policy, it would be a link to MASC where we you would host a, it. We provide okay. you a link that okay. you put on your website. Um, okay. When there is any update to the manual, you just let us know, 
and we take care of the update. Okay. Um, so it would it would prevent some of what I think may have happened of people finding a document that they thought should be in the manual and kind of putting it in the manual mm -hmm. when you saw a lot of this was online but not in your manual. Correct. Um, it would, I think it would keep things much cleaner for you to do that. Correct. Yeah, thank you. I agree. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that one? No, I think yeah. that's... So I, I think I'd like to just publicly thank you, Ms. Presser, on behalf of the yeah. Lynn School Committee for all your work. And I know retirement's around the corner <laughs> here for you. So thank you for everything and enjoy your retirement. And uh, Don't flaunt we couldn't it. have done this without you. I know. Thank you no, so much. No, please flaunt it. Please flaunt it. <laughs> please flaunt it. So, uh, and I know uh, the whole committee Absolutely agrees with me that the, has, your work has, has been, been critical and essential to us getting this done. So we sure. really do appreciate it. Not only thank this you. work, but it has just in general been great to work with the committee with all the things I've worked on over the years. So. Yeah, yeah. I will pass that on to the other members. All right. Did we get that? So there's a motion on the floor. Okay, I adjourned. Uh, second, then, yes. <laughs> Roll call, please. Dugan? Yes. Member Magnolia? Yes. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much.